Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and a few of you might have requested that I cover brush -os again so here we are. More things I've tried to do with brush -o. So one of the small issues I find with this medium is it doesn't behave brilliantly in layers in my opinion anyway. I can do a single layer no problem at all but when it comes to doing another well this is because it is a salt based dye and not a watercolour, it's a universal medium which can be used for many a thing. I wouldn't necessarily say it was a pigment but for the sake of this video I'm going to try and treat it like one and we're going to try and turn this into more of a watercolour medium. I got this idea from a video that Kimberly Crick Art put up and I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description because I think you guys will find it useful and this is where they added powdered gum arabic to charcoal and graphite similar to the liquid pencil I use but obviously something you can do yourself. Now I hadn't quite got the budget to spend uh, more than what I was willing to on the Schmincker powdered gum arabic so I went for a food grade version which was considerably cheaper and I kind of think for an experiment like this perfect for the job. I mixed up a few select colours and then added the powder in there along with some clean tap water because I hadn't got any distilled water on me at the time. I also experimented a little and added a couple of pan to a couple of the pans a little bit of mica powder just to have a little bit of sparkle in there and just to see what would happen. As far as applying the pigments to the paper as you're seeing me swatch here, doesn't appear to be any different, still has that beautiful vibrancy which I like about brush -o, and didn't travel as much surprisingly which is kind of what I wanted. Once the swatches had dried, I'd gone over it with a wet brush just to see what would happen, to see if I could lift. Some of the colours did, some of them not as much as I thought, but generally it did improve the ability to be able to layer things here, which is kind of what I wanted to achieve from this. Now, although I am sort of setting these up to be a little bit like a watercolour, I guess, with that binder in there, I'm still going to treat them like an ink because that's kind of how I've always viewed them. That's kind of how I was taught at college to use them on a paper. I would just mix up my own inks. And again, I suppose really I'm going into the versatility of these, but back in my college days, we used to do black and white photography like in a dark room and the traditional way and these would be wonderful to tint the photographs with afterwards so I don't know it, it's kind of weird how I view this material I don't view it as a true watercolour because it isn't I kind of see it as a ink set where you would do an ink wash however that coming back to life part of this medium has usually been a little bit frustrating for me. I thought a good way to demonstrate this material would be to colour in a little doodle I did whilst I was at work. I'm on the phone a lot of the time so I thought I'd just do a few doodles whilst I'm on hold and that's what I came out with and I thought that would be a great example to try these sort of mixed, I guess, watercolour, brusho, hybrid, inky things. I wanted something on there which had a lot of line detail on it because again one of the things I do love about these is their amazing transparency and I wanted to see if adding any gum arabic to it would affect that. It shouldn't, once the gum arabic's dissolved it doesn't really alter the transparency anyway but I just wanted something where there'd be that clarity on there so I could put this layer of ink or brush -o, over the top and you could still see the line drawings underneath which unfortunately don't quite always get with watercolours because certain watercolours are more opaque than others but with brush -out, it's it's crystal clear. Now obviously this was quite a limited palette choice here I just hadn't got enough pans ready to mix them all in but I thought I'd mixed up a good variety as you can see from the swatches and I also want to revisit these little these little pans of gem colours that I've mixed up in a later video because I have left them aside to dry and I want to see what they're going to be like when they're re-wetted. 
My first impressions of using this is it did ever so slightly change the flow of this material. It sort of, I don't know how to suggest it really, but I guess it sort of slowed it down a little bit is what perhaps what I'm trying to say. And that allowed me to give a nice even coverage especially that large area of the blue hair and when I introduced another blue tone into it I was really impressed that it, it didn't start bleeding into that colour I'd laid down. As I'm sure you've seen in previous videos that happens a lot and again that's down to the salt composition of these dyes. Salt attracts moisture and especially if a surface has been dry and those little salt crystals have sort of come back up even though you can't visibly see them it's still going to attract the moisture and I was hoping and I do think it's kind of worked I was hoping that the gum arabic would just halt it in its tracks just long enough for it to dry and then move on to the next section and I do believe it has I also think as well it didn't affect the mixing process so I did have to customize a couple of colors here to try and get a skin tone but I don't feel like adding the gum arabic compromised it in any way so I was really happy with that. I should mention as well that the paper I'm using is just a mixed media paper it's from a sketchbook I got a couple of years ago I think it might have been from an art snacks box it's a grumbacher or grumbacher um, mixed medium book and I seem to have rediscovered that at the moment so I seem to be picking that up and doodling away. Again referring back to how I want to treat it like an ink I figured this paper would take it and I wouldn't have to sort of consider so much the surface I was working on because when I use brushos I don't really do a serious piece with it I don't really do anything that's going to have that longevity because I know the light fast's not great on it and with it being such a multi-purpose thing I think it is more on the dyeing fabrics or adding tints to like handmade papers for example rather than actually painting with as such I mean I'm not saying that's not what it's for either I mean it's clearly listed as being a medium for that but I perhaps wouldn't use it for a sellable piece that somebody would want on their wall for a long time but I think perhaps if you were making gift cards or if you were journaling these are ideal for that and I think again just adding a binder in there works a treat I didn't try this on this video but I do think that if I used the other side of the paper it might be less prone to coming to life too but that might just have to be an experiment for another time. Personally I tend not to use both sides of the paper in sketchbooks especially when I'm using a wet medium. I just don't want the bleed through so I can't 100% vouch for that. I also wanted to try and introduce a bit of a wet and wet technique just to see if those properties of brush out would still, you know, do their thing. And I am pleased to say that if you do use a wet and wet technique, you will get those bizarre textures that we all know and love with this medium. Overall though, I'm actually really impressed by how effectively this worked. I can imagine if I actually used proper distilled water and proper gum arabic for art purposes, I would probably have better results. However, as an experiment, and maybe if some of you guys are wondering why do my colours keep bleeding, it might just be worthwhile just adding an equal amount of gum arabic to brush powder to water ratio and obviously mix it to how you like. I will give these a good revisit soon but I want to make sure they're completely dry and obviously I'm going to share those results with you, I'll swatch them out again and we'll see what happens. But I am still really happy by how beautiful and transparent they are. Of course let me know down below what you think of this and you want me to pursue this further and also what else you'd like me to try with these mediums. As always thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Bye!